This is a simulation interview. You are going to hear some questions, and then you're going to stop the video and answer the question. You will be asked a series of questions related to your role in aviation, and then to a specific aviation-related topic. There are no right or wrong answers. Show you understand the questions by responding to them directly and fully. The examiner will ask you further questions to encourage you to talk more about some of the things you mention in your responses. Let's start. Could you tell me about your job? As a pilot, my job involves operating and navigating aircraft. I am responsible for ensuring the safety of the flight, passengers, and crew. This includes conducting pre-flight checks, communicating with air traffic control, monitoring instruments, making in-flight decisions, and handling any emergencies that may arise. Additionally, I collaborate with the flight crew and ground personnel to ensure a smooth and efficient operation. My role demands constant training and adherence to safety regulations to maintain a high standard of aviation professionalism. Tell me about your daily routine at work. My daily routine, I wake up early, I leave home, next thing I go to the airport. Then after that, I go to the DO, the dispatch office. We do the briefing, we talk about the procedures, the passengers, the route, the weather conditions. And after that, we go to the cockpit, we go to the aircraft and we check the instruments, the equipment. And finally, we do the walk around, we check the aircraft. How much training is necessary to be a pilot? In my journey to become a pilot, I underwent comprehensive training to acquire the necessary skills and certifications. I started with obtaining a private pilot license, PPL, which typically requires around 40 to 60 flight hours. Subsequently, I pursued a commercial pilot license, CPL, accumulating approximately 150 to 250 total flight hours, including additional training and solo flights. To advance further in my career and assume more responsible roles, I earned an Airline Transport Pilot License, ATPL, requiring a minimum of 1,500 flight hours. Throughout my training, I also prioritized language proficiency, achieving and maintaining the required ICAO level English. Ongoing training and recurrent check rides have been essential to stay current with regulations, technology, and industry best practices. In addition to the formal flight training, I have engaged in continuous professional development to enhance my skills and adapt to evolving aviation standards. Overall, the duration of my training has been a combination of several years, reflecting the commitment required to ensure proficiency, safety, and adherence to aviation standards. I am dedicated to maintaining the highest level of competence. What's the difference between a captain and first officer? Firstly, the captain has more responsibility than the co-pilot. He also has more experience than the co-pilot and is chief of the cabin. Finally, the captain has a better salary than the co-pilot. About the co-pilot slash first officer. The co-pilot helps the captain during the flight, with procedures like the walk-around, the checklist, cockpit preparation, and checking instruments. What is the most exciting moment as a pilot? For me, it is takeoff. After we have finished all the checklists, pre-flight briefings, and everything else involved in pre-flight, it is time to accelerate down the runway and begin the flight. For me, it is the most exciting phase of flight. What do pilots have to do after the flight? After an aircraft has landed and has stopped at the terminal gate, the pilots must shut down the engines and aircraft systems. Although it is the responsibility of the flight attendants, the pilots must also be happy that the passengers have disembarked safely and that everybody is off the aircraft. 
The pilots must ensure that all systems and cockpit controls are switched off and secured safely, ready for the next pilots to take over. I assume there is a checklist for this. The pilots must also have to complete some landing paperwork. What do you think about the autopilot? Well, in my opinion, it is very important. We can turn on autopilot at around 400 feet. The autopilot can manage the aircraft so the flight will be smoother. It reduces the workload of the pilot and that makes the flight safer. Autopilot is normally turned off at about 400 feet during approach, so the pilot can take control of the plane and land it safely. This is the end of the first part of the TEA exam.